pottery friends, YouTube friends, welcome back. I come to you again with a uh, experiment with slips. Um, doing something with slips and stretching them and uh, get to that in a minute because first, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. After my last video where I first presented my idea for my coffee page and the shop that's coming in the future, uh, uh, there was some, a lot, many of you hopped over to my Kofi page, left me heartwarming comments and donations. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, really, I, I hope I responded to everybody. I think I did. Oh, yeah. What can I say? Thank you. And I have one more kill to fill. Kill to fill. <laughs> And a bisque glaze now and, that. and then I will uh, have pieces in the shop. A uh, very, very extra thank you to Jane from the Shoebox Studio in Australia. She's a potter in Australia and she opted in for a membership. Ah, that's so nice to have you there. And you will get first dibs when the shop is up. So thank you so much. Ah, so nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um. Yeah, I'll be sending you to my past me <laughs> and uh, just a short introduction. I'll try and keep it short. Besides all the creative things that I love to do, I'm also very uh, interested in science and I've been following a couple of scientists that are kind enough to, you know, the whole quantum physics thing uh, to translate it for people like me. <laughs> I wanted to say you and me, but I don't know, maybe there's a scientist in there. And uh, they, the last couple of years, they, what they have discovered is amazing. And one of the things is that um, it's, going, it's not going to be correct because I cannot repeat, and I'm not a scientist in that way, but what they have found out that everything in the universe, in our reality, in our world is, sort of a network and uh, a network of energy and no, look it up it's very interesting and um, as serendipity or synchronicities or coincidence coincidences would like to have it i came across a video about a lady not well not about a lady by a lady who did neuro who does neurographic art now she has her youtube channel set on uh well i couldn't even save the video i couldn't share the link so if you're interested neurographic art and she does it with you know watercolors or markers but i thought i can do that in slip well, <laughs> that's what i thought anyway and i'm going to try that so that's what i'm going to do now so i'll send you to my past me again <laughs> and uh i hope you enjoy I had a blast experimenting, and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. So here we are. Let's do this. Let's see what happens. My thinking was, uh, I have a thickish, well, what you call this a slab? <laughs> oh, a thick, thick pancake. And my thinking was to first flood this with water down slip I will then set it aside and go to the next stage um, this is my red slip I'm going to just you know take a little put it here and spray some water in there I want to oh <laughs> I'm already messing it up of course I've tried to make this slab as flat or as level as I can, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, I want this to flow and I have no idea whether that will work. I think I need a little bit more and also a little bit more water. I guess I should have prepared my three slips, but hey. Like 
let's see. Ah, I should have prepared brushes too. Ah, this is what happens when I have an idea that I just ah, cannot not do, you know. This one's dried out a bit. What is this? This is, let me try to pronounce this. Praseodymium yellow. <laughs> it's a very light yellow. Um, for those who have painted before. Oh, by the way, there's a, there's a color called that in, um, in ceramics too. It's, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of a Naples yellow. Very light. But it's dried up. Oh, no preparation. Ta -di -da -di -da. Oh, there's a big truck coming. Oh, my. There's a whole container being uh, shipped over the road. <laughs> Do I have a little? Oh, I have. It's a very light yellow, so I don't know. Oh, I have pieces in there. You know, it's so good. <laughs> Let's go with it. Do they mix a little bit? Yeah. Ah. I might, you know, spray some water on here. Like, hold on, that's something. Ah, oh, things are popping in my brain. Which, you know, connects to this kind of, what they call neurographic art. Let's see. This is Vanadium Zirconium Blue. It's a beautiful uh, medium blue going a little bit towards turquoise, but it is a, a more blue than turquoise. Makes sense, right? Is this dry already? No, it's not. That's good. What would happen if I, let's see, does that work? Mm, not really. One more thing. Oh, I like that. Do I have enough yellow to do that with? Yes. A little bit of this. I need a bit more water. Now, this is so watered down that I have no idea how this will show up in the uh in the end but you know okay there we go and um i'm going to set this aside and let this dry and go for the the pattern i'm going to make and i'll be making that on a piece of paper so i'll get right back to you i'm back uh is this has already been drying a little bit. It's um, not tacky anymore, uh, but of course the clay is still pretty soft. It's a thick slab. And I cut out a piece of paper. This is about the size of that with pencil. I have a dark purple here in my uh, slip trailing bottle. And I was thinking of, you know, doing that here and then transferring it up to there. And then I thought I can also straight go up there with this. And then I thought, but then I cannot uh, um, practice or, you know, if I want to take it off because something happens. So I'm still going to do it here, just so you know how chaotic my mind is. And I also want to show you the colors. I, I took my tests from my board. This is that pale yellow it's 5% of mason number 6433 for those who want to make their stains. This is 15% of 5987, which you cannot buy anymore. 
sorry <laughs> and this is 10% 6315 vanadium zirconium blue and well it made a bit of an orange and I hopefully maybe even a green I don't know we'll see when that gets fired so now I'm going to try to make that oh, neural network thingy and in the video I saw oh I can do that with pencil um, the lady made organic shapes small ones big ones and then she she made um, lines that would go through those organic shapes something like that and she rounded off these corners and that would then give you the effect of a sort of kind of neural network thingy. <laughs> oh, I have no idea. I'm going to try to do this with slip and um, well, follow along. <laughs> I put my pin in here so I don't lose it. Let's do a practice one. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, oops. I need one more. There we go. Organic shapes first. I don't like even numbers, so we'll put one in here. And now I'm going for the, you're in my way, for the sort of kind of straight lines. And I will immediately, while the slip is still wet, try to round these corners. Oh. oh, that's not round. Oh my gosh. I'm not be being very precise like she is in her drawing. Um, I'm going to stretch this and we'll see what happens. I'm so curious already. Oh gosh. <laughs> I need one more. That way or that way? That way. Oh, no, I'm going. Nope, it's clogging. That happens. There we go. Still clogging. No, no, no. 
enough I don't think so I'm going to put two more in um, one on the edge here and one uh, one here and one here and then I'm really making a mess. This does not look like pretty rounded corners. But hey! Oh, oh. You there? Now, I do need to let this dry enough so that it doesn't smear. But like I said in my other video about stretching slip, um, if you have underglazes because of the uh, additives that are in there, so far that works just a little bit better than the slips. I might have to look up a recipe for a slip with, I don't know, um, something in there that keeps it from drying out too fast and cracking, but we'll see. I'll let this dry and I'll come back to you when I think I can put it on there. Just a second it out of the sun and you can see, I guess, these light bits are completely dry. This is it is dry, but um, not as dry as that. <laughs> it's a bit thicker. So, um, yeah, I guess let's do this. <laughs> I am going to change boards because this is a new one. I've just put a new canvas on and it was a cheap one, you know, once you buy for a few dollars and um, uh, a painting canvas. I, I took it off the, the frame and these are people prepared canvases for painting and this has a lot of gesso or whatever on it so it doesn't take up moisture as well as this one it's an oldie uh, so I'm going to change these out I should have done no, it's easily done but I should have done that beforehand as always because I'm going to stretch it and that works better on this one than on this one because it will stick and the rest can all go somewhere else for now there we go ah oh, let's do this I'm not going to wet it I'm going to put it on there hopefully I can see I can see a little bit on the back side and I'll wet the back side uh, <laughs> okay yeah that's on there that's on there go a bit that way oh no I need to go that way mm -hmm. something like this pressing it on My clay is still wet enough for it to stick a little. Uh, let's take a pony roller first. Let's see if that's enough. Uh, I need something like a banding wheel. Let's see if there is any transfer going on or that I need to wet it. Oh, that's not bad. Actually, without wetting it. Good. 
a little bit more pressure. Let's see. Just a few parts that are missing, but that's fine. This is never going to be a hundred percent. Look at that. Ooh. Can you tell the colors underneath? I like that. I already like it. Now I need to stretch it. I'm going to take a piece of paper first and see if it smears. I need my scissors. I don't think so. I really don't think so, but let's try. Nope, nothing. Good. So now I'm going to stretch this. I'm going to do it differently than in the last video. Because uh, last video I flipped it upside down and wanted it to surprise me. Uh, I would still, I still like that. But I have tried stretching another pattern yesterday and did the same thing. But when it's this thick, oops, don't do that. When it's this thick and you start rolling out from this side, what happened to me was that I was rolling out this over. So in the end, I wound up with the exact same image in the middle and just plain clay around it. And I don't want that. So I'm going to um, get myself a rolling pin. Is it clean? Of course not. I'm cleaning my rolling pin. There we go. Ooh, cracking. cracking look at that <laughs> maybe I should have wet it I don't know The whole slap is cracking. <laughs> oh, I left it out too long. Well, of course, while I was working on this, I had somebody come at the door. I had to talk to them for half an hour. Um, yeah, well, it happened. It's fine. Can't say I hate it. What's happening here? Are you still all in the picture? Not really. There we go. How thick is this? I can go a little bit thinner. thinner than this oh my word I'm so curious how this will come out okay thin enough now 
what that lady in that video also does is create uh, a shadow in all these shapes but because they are so crackly now I don't think I will I think I will leave it like this and see what happens it's got cute little halos around everything now I'll take a picture up oh hello I'll take a picture of this up close put it in there so you can see and now I'm going to find me I don't know something to slump it over and make it into a shape Found the mold. Just the bisque plate sort of kind of thing. <laughs> I was thinking to put this in a mold instead of over it because it's so dry. Now let's see if I can get this somehow, some way in the middle and see if I can still get it in there without it cracking even more. I do not want to use a wet sponge, obviously. Is it in there? Almost. Now, I have somewhere... Oh, it's up there. Hold on. Uh, Ta-da! I make these pounds bags, or actually they're more weight bags, for uh, when I have something flat that you know sometimes the the bottom in the middle comes up so i dry them with a little weight on it and this one i can use to pounce i there's something coming out i think it's just sand i think it's just sand in there i don't know and i don't want to open it up we'll see Lifting this up a bit to push it into that mold. Cut it round just like that. I picked a mold with a flat bottom or inside and bottom, so I don't need to put feet on this one. Uh huh. Would we love a cheese cutter or a sort of kind of? Don't even know why I cut this. Last week we I had a that was so funny. I had customers. And she uh, is doing uh, uh, a ceramic school in the Netherlands. It's a, a three-year program. She was here on holiday, so she came by with blah, blah, talking pots, which doesn't happen that often, of course, here for me. So that was fun. Her husband was not interested in ceramics at all. <laughs> so he came here and he looked at everything here. And then he said, you have a lot of tools. And then I thought, yeah, correct. You know, 17, 18 years of collecting. Well, collecting. And I, I was gifted a lot for some reason, even here on Bonaire. So yeah, I have a lot of tools. I remember when I told you that we were going to have to move, which in the end turned out we didn't. I was already packing things up. And I have a couple of boxes and, and things down here uh, with tools I packed up. And I haven't missed one of them. Sweet. You don't need all those tools, but if you, if 
the gifted tea. I mean, the only tools I have bought are new scafito and trimming tools because they wear out. But that's it, really. Okay, I'm digressing. I'm just postponing the cotton detail. <laughs> I'm going to anyway. I'm not going to leave it like this with all the cracks hanging up. I'm going to cut it and we'll see. Hopefully I can keep this straight and we'll be good. There we go. Oh. That was not good. Oh well. That looks like a pretty thick, very shallow plate. <laughs> there it is. I really, really like it. So far, so good. Um, it's a bit thick, I think. Maybe I can, you know, if it's uh, stiffened up a bit, flip it over and trim it. It now has to dry. Uh, I'll come back to you when I... Oh. I didn't... I, I put in... I, I didn't pay attention and I gouged in with the with the side of my cutter put your glasses on i'll mess with that later yeah i'm putting this aside so far so good i'm going to try another one and hopefully don't get interrupted and see if i then have less cracks i don't know maybe it's just because it's slip and not um an underglaze let's do another one with different colors right but first, <laughs> oh, let me put you a little bit more there. I have these things left over. You can, if you want to, let it dry a little bit more and take a metal, metal rib. I have done that before. Take a metal rib and scrape that. It's a very thin layer. You can scrape that off and save your clay. I think I'm going to uh, dive into my box with cookie cutters. Maybe stretch it out a little bit more get some cookie cutters and make some shapes for i don't know pendants or something like that
out of the Jimmy for you. So this one is still fairly soft. That's the bottom. This all needs a little bit more cleanup. Uh, here we are. Next day, took that humongous uh, to be tankard out of the jimmy and I was my clumsy me again <laughs> oh well <laughs> I guess I'll start over and this is the other one the first one I did uh, also dried out oh you're all what am I doing Oh, well. um, it's getting hotter and drier, so I need to adapt better to our climate at the moment here. Because this one, when I, uh, that one, remember the first one, remember, you just watched it. <laughs> um, it's almost bone dry already, and it's the next day. And when I took it out of, from the, from the mold, out of the plate, it cracked on me. Or it had cracks, as you can see. I filled them up with the same purple slip so I brushed the slip all over and wiped away so the cracks are now decorative <laughs> I will keep this one uh, I'm having it oh, it's on on a little board with a wave back the other one no that's not salvable <laughs> so, now we have to wait until I have enough to fill the kiln and uh, get them fired. See you all in the next one.